So for basting, one thread is enough. And then what we do, we do a quilter's knot. This is how you do it. One, two, three, hold it, push and pull. And it creates a knot. And then when you need to baste, this is what you do. Obviously, let's say we have two layers that need to be put together. And then you start basting like this. In, out, in, out, in, out. And this stage is going to be on your seam allowance line. That's a quarter it, of an inch. This, yes. And then once you're done, push, pull. And then when you let it go, that's gonna look like this. You go back again a stitch and go over another stitch. This is how you're gonna be finishing, that's it. And then eventually you cut it. And if you're, you're ready to take it out, the last one is released like that and pull and it's gonna be coming out, that's it. This is a finish sewing stitch. You go in, out, and this is gonna be one eighth of an inch. And then again, you go back and you go forward. You go forward past, which would be a quarter of an inch. Then you go back one eighth. Once, when you're done doing this, you go in and out in the same place. And then if you want to finish, this is what you do. You enter a little bit, pick up a thread, and then see how this is. This looks like letter B. You turn it into like an eight, go around it, pull, and it will tie a knot. That's it. So this is a heat bond method that I'm gonna show you now. And this is called Heat and Bond Ultra Hold. Um, it's available at most fabric stores. And this is what it looks like. We got the really thin stuff. This is around a quarter of an inch or three eighths. So what I'm gonna do is start by putting it on a straight line seam. And there's the glue side. I'm gonna put that down first. I'm gonna put it right in here. I'm gonna take an iron and just tack it down. I wanna make sure I don't get any that's gonna go outside of that area. You have to iron it just a little bit more to get that to stay down. And once it's cool, should be able to peel it up. There it is. So there's the glue. And then I'm going to put this down and right sides facing. So this fabric is slightly different on one side than the other. So I'm going to put it right down in here to my iron and iron it again. And if you're concerned, you always need to test synthetics. So if you're concerned that it might melt it, you can also put a piece of uh, like white bond paper over the top. You can't pull on it until it's absolutely cool. And once it's cool, see it's not really, I didn't get it hot enough. So I need to go in and do it again. And I just want to show you how hot this seam, how strong this seam actually is. So you have to keep testing because um, it's kind of like putting on fusible interfacing. All fabric is different. So we're gonna see, we're gonna kind of dry this out, cool it off and see how strong, and that's pretty strong. So that, you can make a, a non-sewing seam. Uh, this is similar to what happens in the sportswear industry with some of the shoes. 
So the other thing I can use heat and bond for is to do a seamless look to things like pockets, maybe a patch pocket. So I'm going to put the heat and bond on here. I snipped it so I can go around the curve. Go a little bit around the curve. Make sure that it's cool before I lift it up. I'm just gonna cut this piece off. And then if I have a piece that I want to put it onto, let's say I wanna roll this and have this be a nice finished edge with this really invisible look to the pocket. So once this is cool, I should be able to peel the paper off. Okay, so there's the paper coming off. And now I'm going to turn this and heat it turn it and heat it, and I have to kind of stretch it a little bit to go around that little bitty curve. This is very hard to do with big curves. I can do it with an almost straight line. And I can do it on a stretch fabric. So now I have this really beautiful seamless edge. And that's all finished. There's no top stitching on it. It just kind of disappears into there. Um, if I have to use the heat and bond for a lot of seams or maybe some hand sewing, this whole thing will pretty much disappear. And I can, I can essentially turn all the edges and do the same thing and then heat and bond, turn it, and then heat and bond it down to the piece, but it, it's a really beautiful way to um, finish things. So this is leather, and you can try heat and bond on leather, but you risk discoloring the leather. This is a really thin leather. So I put the heat and bond on here, and we're gonna see what it does. I'm gonna take the iron, and I do risk, it won't melt the leather, but I do risk discoloring it. So this one seemed to be okay. And then the other thing that you definitely have to do with leather is you gotta pound the edges. You just take a regular hammer, Pounded to make a fold. So this was pretty successful. Um, and it looks like, eh, it looks like it's probably gonna hold pretty well. The other way to do it, there are double face, strong double face tapes that do not require heat. Uh, this is one. And we'll see what this one's like. Let's see what this one does. Uh, this one definitely goes down, and we actually use a lot of this to lock in the leather seam so we don't have to use the really smelly glues. But again, you want to pound the edge. Okay, so these are two ways to do this kind of seam. Uh, they look, this one looks pretty strong. You gotta make sure that the glue is a high tack. Uh, this one is still pretty strong. And so that's a way that you can finish leather edges without doing um, stitching. So this one, which was the heat and bond, looks like it's not quite as crisp on this edge. This one, which was the non-heat, tape actually did better. So I would recommend that. So this is a heavier leather. It's not gonna fold quite as easily. So I'm gonna do a test of, uh, this is um, E6000 glue, which is a super industrial strength adhesive. I'm gonna also test the um, non-heat tape and see which one works better. 
I'm going to put a little bit of the glue on the edge here. I'm going to be kind of careful because I can't really get it off. So I'm going to put it in here. And some of these leather glues, there's another one called Barge, which is a great glue, but it's really stinky. So now I'm going to I press this one down. So I'm going to peel that off. And we're going to try both of them. And what I do with these is I use these. These are great little clamps. I just have a whole bunch of these, and I use these because you have to have pressure. And the glue side, I'm going to have to let it set up. So I'm going to use these. I just use a whole bunch of them. And then I'm going to take my hammer, because this is a heavier leather. And I... Okay. And then this, I think, takes a few minutes to set up. We're going to see what this is like. I'm going to have to pound it as well, because see, that crease is not the same. And then I'm going to put the clips back on it because it, I think it takes about 10 minutes to set up. And then we're going to see what the difference is between the two. This one is really fast. This was that tape. This is the um, non-heat tape. I'm also burnishing it. This is just a standard hammer. You don't really have to have a specialized one to do this. I'm kind of burnishing it down. And I move the clips to the very edge to try and get them to set up. And we're going to burnish that as well and see how this goes. So leather requires a lot of manipulation. That's the thing. So I'm going to hold off on testing that. But what I did notice with the, see, that doesn't stick quite as well as it did on the thinner leather. I mean, it's still there, but it's not all that permanent. So a lot of this stuff is on leather is really used to hold it in place because you can't use pins until you can sew it. So what I might do is use this hold it down, as long as there's, now you see that the other side is different. So this is not quite as flat, this is very flat. Um, so this with the uh, tape probably works a little better, but then I'd have to go in and probably hand sew onto here to get that to actually stay down. So the, um, the tape isn't really enough, uh, the glue might be. And 